Thank you. All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Kamil and I'm speaking to you from Warsaw, Poland. Uh, very glad to be here. And today I would like to talk about Shiny Fluent and Shiny React, which are two libraries which we developed at Absalon and recently made a public release. And the topic is how to build beautiful Shiny apps. And I hope these packages will help you do that. And let's get let's get right to it. So my plan for this presentation is the following. I would like to give you a short overview of the technologies involved here, uh, and also tell you a little bit how to get started using the packages. Uh, and then the bulk of the talk will be leaf coding, where I will show you my actual process, which I use to work with the packages and to develop a sample app. Uh, we will be building a very simple dashboard, uh, which can show sales representatives data, uh, a data set included in Shiny Fluent package. And uh, it will be a very basic one. It's based on the tutorial, which is also available on Shiny Fluent page. So you're free to check it out later on and follow the tutorial on your own. Uh, I will be doing a smaller simplified version. And in the end, we'll have some time for a Q&A. So let's get started. First of all, what is React and what is Fluent UI? So React is a JavaScript library, uh, or you could even say it's a framework, a very popular recently. Uh, it's a technology that uh, many other libraries are based on. Uh, it proved very successful and um, it's probably because of its unique approach where you build an interface in a more declarative style rather than um, telling the interface what to do uh, like you would do in many other popular libraries like jQuery, for example. And a React is basically just a framework for building that. It does not give you, for building interfaces, it does not give you too much on its own. But as I said, there are many libraries which are created on top of it and very successful ones. One of those libraries is Fluent UI, and it's a library from Microsoft, which is based on React. At least the part that we'll be looking at is based on React. The whole library is a quite a big product, which is used across Microsoft products. And this is what gives you the look and feel of Microsoft products, basically. So now the two packages that I will be speaking about today is Shiny React and Shiny Fluent. So I won't be speaking too much actually of Shiny React because it's a kind of low level package with machinery, which allows you to use React in Shiny. Uh, as React is quite a different technology from Shiny, from and basically making it work in Shiny was quite a big challenge for us. Uh, we have a whole package which gives you tools which allow you to use React in Shiny. But here it's it's kind of it's kind of in the background. Uh, in the future, we plan on extending the documentation and make it making it possible. Like it is possible right now, but uh, lack like some documentation which would allow you to understand how to use Shiny React to use your own React libraries or maybe other components. Uh, but basically, it is the core on which Shiny Fluent is based. And Shiny Fluent is basically a wrapper for Fluent UI. Uh, it uses the Shiny React machinery uh, to build an interface which is easy to use from R and Shiny so that you can feel at home if you know those technologies. Now, why would you like to use Shiny Fluent? So a few most prominent reasons, in my opinion, uh, are listed here. And first of all, as I said, Fluent UI is a UI, UI library. So what it gives you is a set of components and styles that you can use to build an interface. And in this case, you get a look similar to what um, you see in Microsoft. And you can say that by using Shiny Fluent, you'll get this professional look uh, assuming that you use those components consistently and so on. Uh, secondly, with Shiny Fluent, you will be able to use Fluent UI pretty much seamlessly with R and Shiny. So using Fluent UI previously required quite a bit of knowledge of JavaScript and also React because it is heavily based on this. However, with Shiny Fluent, you should be able to start building a Fluent UI interface 
uh, with pretty much basic knowledge of, uh, of Shiny and R. Moreover, we tried to make the library in such a way that it gives you the full power of Fluent UI. So nothing is hidden. It's not like only select, selected components uh, are available to you. You actually have access to all the components which are defined in, Shine, in Fluent UI and also to, to the various styles and CSS that is available there. And lastly, uh, this applies to both Shiny Fluent itself and to Fluent UI. There is a lot of documentation available. Fluent UI is pretty well documented and we also have the documentation available in the package itself. Uh, and also there are many examples, actually each, each component from the library is documented so you can take a look and learn how to use it. So this is it for the overview of the technologies. Now I'd just like to give you a short info on how to start using them. Uh, so the packages are not yet on CRAN, although we are working to get them there. Uh, for now, if you want to start playing with the packages, uh, just use two commands installed directly from GitHub. Uh, you can find these commands in the readme on Shiny Fluent in the repository of Shiny Fluent on, on GitHub, yes. Then uh, to start uh, working with the package, uh, there are many resources available to you. I want to point just the ones which I use the most and I find the most useful. So first of all, uh, there is online reference, which is also linked on our GitHub page. And this is basically the same the same reference that is available to you inside inside R. So you can type any component with a question mark at the beginning and you'll get the same documentation that you can see here in this online reference. In addition to that, there are also vignettes which explain some other topics. Uh, so it's a useful thing as well. Secondly, I recommend accessing the demo dashboard Actually, I will be showing you how to use all these references during the live coding in a moment, uh, but I just want to mention it. Uh, it's an app that you saw on the previous slide and it's, it's basically built using Shiny Fluent and it's a showcase of all components along with examples. Lastly, official Fluent UI docs are actually super useful here as well. They have pretty good search. And as I said, all the functionality that they provide is available to you as well. You just need to learn how to translate the language that you read there into Shiny Fluent, but it's pretty simple as you will see in a moment. All right, so I would like to jump into the leaf coding now. Uh, I have a pretty ambitious plan. I, we don't have much time to do this much, uh, we, like we have little time, so I hope uh, we can actually uh, get this finished. So I would like to start with a simple Hello World app, which will just show you how to run Shiny Fluent uh, and it will just display a simple message. Then we'll explore some data available as part of the package and show it in a table, also a component from Fluent UI. Then we'll learn about inputs, which is, uh, it was, which was a big challenge for us uh, when making sure that it is easy to use the library from R in a natural way. Uh, and I hope we actually managed to, to achieve that. Uh, then we'll do some visual stuff. We'll first make cards uh, to group some elements and add a grid layout, which will react to the resizing of the window. And lastly, to showcase some additional components, I will show you how to add another filters and show how you can use other libraries uh, seamlessly with Shiny Fluent. So let's, let's start the coding. Uh, so I will start with a simple uh, up our file and this is the only thing that I will be, will be doing. I won't be creating any more files. And to start off, uh, I will include the two libraries that we need. As I said, uh, Shiny React will be, is actually very important here, but we won't see it directly. It's sitting underneath all the time. So we just need Shiny and Shiny Fluent in this case. And the first thing that you want to know is that when you define UI for your app, you probably want to use Fluent page. You can use the components without it as well. Uh, however, 
as of now, it provides some styles. It also disables Bootstrap, uh, which doesn't always play nicely with Fluent UI. So it's a good idea to build your UI in this function. And I will now use a very simple component called text, uh, which, as you can see, I'm pretty much using it as you would use, say, a div or span or basically any other component. I just call the function, uh, tell it what to display. And in addition, it can take some additional arguments. And I will show you later how to learn what those arguments are. In this case, I want to say that I want a very large text. And let's also add a simple placeholder server function. And wrap it in a shiny app. So let me now start this. Let's see what happened. Take some time. Pause. All right. I have the app running here, and as you can see. We have a large text saying hello, and this is what I wanted to achieve. So the very simple hello world app is running. All right. Second thing, uh, as I promised, we'd like to look at some data which is available as part of the package and show it in a table. And for that, we will use a component from Shiny Fluent. So with a package, uh, you get two data sets, like two data frames with some data. Uh, one is called Fluent Sales Deals. And if we take a look at what it contains, uh, it's basically a data frame of imaginary sales deals. Each sales deals has a representative ID, which is like the ID of the person who made the deal. And there's also the name of that representative, date, uh, name of the client, uh, whether the deal is already closed or not, and also many other, lots of other information which can be used to build some cool interface, play around. Uh, the tutorial that we have available on the page uses this data to build a bit more. Uh, we will use just a few fields from here. And the second data set that we will be using is Fluent People, uh, which adds more information to this representative ID. So the ID that you can see here matches the key somewhere here. And you can learn the name of the person, the position that they take. And if you take a look here at these columns, they are somewhat specific uh, so that they can be easily used in some of the components that we will be showing. All right, so I would like to first of all take this sales deals and display them in a table. And to find a suitable component, uh, I will use the official docs. So when you first come to this library, it might be quite daunting. There is a lot of things that you can use. And basically, I think a good way to learn about what's available is to just take a look at the docs and browse through them and find something that will suit your needs. And to find the docs, you just type Fluent UI the first link that you'll get um, will be this kind of page. And if you go to web and controls, you get this documentation. And here you have a list of all components that are available in the library. And you can just take a look and see what you'd like to use. In this case, I'm interested in this details list component because this is kind of weird name, but it's pretty much a table. Uh, but it uses some it uses some nice styling from uh, which matches the rest of Fluent UI. So this is something that I'd like to use. If we scroll down a bit more, you can see a list of various properties that this component can take. And as I said before, that we'll take a look. Uh, I, I will tell you how to find out what configuration options you have. So basically, this is a full list. Uh, the same. The same help is available in the reference if you type, for example, question mark and text, you will also get information on what kind of arguments can be used for configuring 
uh, given component. So I would like to use this details list and I can see that items are required. So let's just try to put this component here. And as items, let's provide the data set that we have and see what happens. So let me just move this around. All right. So yes, after refreshing with this details list, you can see that we are basically displaying the table. Uh, so I would now like to probably get rid of the columns that I have here because it's showing me everything. I would like to configure this a bit. And to find out how to do that, I would like to show you a second resource, which I mentioned earlier, which is the demo dashboard, which also shows you examples for all the components. So if you do, if you type demo epsilon, the, the first result that you will find is this page. And this is a page which lists demos for many apps that we develop in Absalon. But of particular interest to us is this shiny dashboard with, built with Fluent UI. So let's open it. And there we go. So this is an app built entirely with Shiny Fluent, and it's at the same time a reference and a source of examples on how to use the various components that we have here. And we can find the details list, for example. And if you take a look at this example, we can see that columns can be defined with, a, with an argument called columns. And if we take a look, uh, it seems that we will need field name and the name. Uh, the key can be actually skipped. Uh, we can do things slightly different and you can find that out with experimentation. So I will actually use table to define the columns that I want. And we will need field name, which will tell us uh, which, uh, which fields of the data frame we want. And in this case, I will want representative name, date, deal amount, city, and whether the deal is closed or not. And we also want some human readable names. So let's call it sales rep, close date, amount, city is closed. Now we pass this as the columns. We refresh our app. And we can see that the columns are now matching what we provided here. So. This is pretty good. Uh, this is what I wanted to achieve. Uh, I would like to make a few improvements. Uh, first of all, I think I would like to, instead of this hello, to display some, some title basically for what we are showing here. So let's call it sales deals details. And maybe let's decrease the font size. But to learn what variants I have available, I will take a look at the docs. If we go to the text documentation, I have a list of variants available. And in this case, let's maybe take large. Better. And one more thing which I would like to change, I would like to get rid of these checkboxes because I won't be using them. So let's go to the documentation for details list again. And here, let's find checkbox and just like try to find some property uh, which might be able to toggle the checkboxes. And sure enough, we have something called checkbox visibility. And you can see that it takes type called checkbox visibility. And by clicking, I can learn that it's an enum. Depending on the value I choose, we'll have like one of these options. So I want to hide the checkboxes. So in this case, I will use value two. And after ref refreshing, the checkboxes are gone, which is what I wanted to achieve. All right. So onto the next task, uh, I would like to add a simple input. And this is a 
key feature of Shiny Fluent. We tried to make the inputs from Shiny from Fluent UI as close to what you would expect in Shiny as possible. So in this case, I would like to add a simple toggle uh, that will allow me to filter the deals based on whether they are closed or not. Uh, and we can check if there is a toggle component, for example, here. Sure enough, there is one. Uh, we can also take a look at the demo dashboard and find toggle to learn how to use it. You can see an R example here. And you might see in this example that we use something called toggle.shiny input. So you might wonder what this dot shiny input means. And this is where the third resource, which I mentioned, comes in. Uh, if we go to GitHub Shiny Fluent, there is a link here, which sends you to the reference, uh, which is also available from within R, but I just prefer to read the vignettes from here. And in the articles, you can find a topic guide called React in Shiny. And if you read this, especially this part about fluent inputs, you will learn that what uh, you have in React doesn't directly map to Shiny. There is like no concept of inputs and outputs. There are just components. And the components take various arguments, like for example, on change, which allow you to um, interact with them. Uh, and it is possible to use the components directly, and this example tells you how. However, for the most common and common use cases, we have some wrappers which make the interface very close to what you would expect in Shiny. And those wrappers have an extension dot Shiny input. And basically, it is what you would expect in Shiny. So the first value that you provide is the input ID under which this value will be available in the server function then you can provide optionally an initial value. And oftentimes, you have a label configurable. Basically, the remaining arguments are as in the docs. So let's try to use uh, the slider, uh, the toggle that we found here. And pretty much what I would like to do um, I will just add a toggle here. Let's call it include open and let's add some label. And let's see what happens just with this. So there we go, we have a toggle. However, it does nothing yet. Uh, to do something with it, we need to access its value on the server function. So let's do that. But first, because we will want to apply filtering to the table, let's start to render this table dynamically. And for this, I will basically cut the table that I have here and replace it with a UI output. And instead, I will render it on the server. just like this. So let's see if it still works. It does. Nothing should change besides the fact that the table is now rendered dynamically on the server. So now I can try to access the value of this toggle on the server and use it for filtering. So what I want to do is instead of using this static data, I will create a reactive called filtered deals which will contain the same data, but after applying filtering. So I will pass it to filter function from deplier. And use a simple condition here. So the way I want it to work is all closed deals are always included. Uh, and if we are looking at an open deal, uh, we only include it if the toggle says to do that. So a condition like this should do the job. And now let's use this reactive here. So after refreshing, we can see that 
only closed deals are visible. And if I switch the toggle, you can see that both open and closed deals are visible. So this is what I wanted. Uh, we're good to continue. So the next thing that we'd like to do is improve visuals with cards. So Fluent UI is not only components. Uh, it provides you also quite a lot of styling capabilities. And for that, you want to browse the official docs. If, if you take a look here at the styles at the top and open this page, you can go to elevation. And from this page, you can learn that there are many classes available to you to, for example, create cards like this, which are slightly elevated and allow you to separate various parts of the interface. And in this case, I would like to just use this class to separate the filters and the table into two cards, basically. So what I would like to do is to wrap these two things in divs, and I will apply some styling. I will apply some class to the div to change their style. like this and I want to use this class so you can see that it's hard to see but the cards appeared however it does not look very good due to spacing and such uh, so let's try to fix this and I could write some CSS here to our padding and so on, but there is actually another very useful component called stack. If you just go back to the controls, which is pretty much a diff with advanced capabilities for spacing, arranging items and so on. And you can take a read here to learn all the possibilities. Uh, in this case, I want to keep it pretty simple. Uh, what I would like to do is to basically do two things. I would like to add some padding and so-called children gap, which will add spacing between the elements inside, uh, inside this stack. This kind of thing. And let's see this. There we go. You can see that now we have some padding around, around uh, this page. And I would also like to add a title here. So we can just copy this one. Let's call it filters. So we also have a title now, and you can see that there's some space between these filters and the toggle. And this is thanks to the children gap that we added here. All right. Uh, so I would like to do similar thing to this card, but now I can see that uh, I will be actually repeating some code. So let's do a quick refactor. And I'll just like take this function and define a simple helper, which will make cards for me and take an optional title. So I want this class applied, the tokens. Uh, instead of this title, I want whatever is provided here and let's make it optional. And instead of the content, let's just put everything here. And now I should be able to use this card instead of this whole thing. So this should become title. Let's see if it works. It's just refactoring, so nothing should change. But now I should be able to use the class to this function that I just defined to also make a similar adjustment to the 
thing below. So let's try to use it. And there we go. So now I have two cards. Uh, there is like spacing between them is not ideal, but inside it looks pretty good. So again, this is what I wanted to achieve. And I think I would like to do one more thing here. Uh, I would like to decrease the height of the table that we have here um, because it's too long basically. And in this case, I will just like use some simple CSS and wrap everything in a div. So let's limit it to 500 pixels and let's show a scroll bar if it's too large, just like this. And there we go. Okay. So now I would like to do something about the layout of these cards and also improve the spacing here. And for that, we can go to styles again and look at the layout. And this page will tell you about the various options that you have in Fluent UI for, uh, for basically using their built-in grid system. What's nice about this system is that it has some predefined screen sizes. So it allows you to make your dashboard react to resizing of the page. And as I'm running out of time, I will actually speed things up a bit by hopping over to helper functions, which I'd like to use here. And these are very simple helpers. They basically define divs which, with some classes, which you can read about here applied. And there's also some hacking around the padding. So to use this properly, we need to take a deeper read, but to keep things simple, I, I will just fix the padding manually this way. And what I would like to do now uh, is basically to use these two functions to divide my content uh, into, into a layout. And to do that, I will wrap, first of all, my whole UI in this grid helper. And then I want a grid item here, this one card. I will add a placeholder read item with an empty card here, just to show you how this reactive layout works. And I will wrap this in as another grid item. So if I refresh it now, uh, you can see that the padding is fixed, but otherwise, uh, and there is this blank placeholder that I added, but otherwise not much is happening. Uh, basically, basically everything is, uh, like listed in order. However, using the classes uh, that are that you can read about here and here at the bottom, uh, we can make this react to changing the size of the window. And once again, I will just put some code here and give you an explanation of what happens. So Basically, what I'm doing is I'm saying that if the screen is at least small, this grid item should take 12 columns. And if the screen is at least extra large, it should take four columns. And for the second card, same thing if the screen is small, but if the screen is at least extra large, take eight columns. And let me just present you what happens after adding these classes. As you can see, nothing now. But if I now expand my window, at some point, the two boxes will snap between each other. If the screen becomes large enough, uh, these two things will appear side by side. And this one will take four columns. This one will take eight columns. And I should mention that the screen in general is divided to 12 equal columns, at least as Fluent UI understands it. So, this is it for the layout, uh, a very simple thing that I wanted to show you. And now I would like to quickly go over these last two things. 
just to showcase another cool component and also show you that you can use any other library uh, within this dashboard, which you would like. So the first thing that I'd like to do uh, is to add to the filters that I have here, a component called people picker. And you can again read about this in, in this page. Uh, there is an extensive example how to use it, but actually you do not need all those configuration options. Uh, actually, it is possible to use it in a very simple way. And to show you, let me just again do a quick refactor. This will add more filters. Let's just define a variable for that. Ensure that it still works. Yes, it does. And I would like to use this normal people picker input. Uh, again, the value selected will be available under the name people on the server. And it takes like a drop down, uh, an argument called options, and I will just provide it with fluent people, which is the second data set that we explored. And let's see what happens. Mm. Typo. And now we have this. Uh, component which allows you to pick people. And of course, we'd like to use it on the server. And it's pretty similar to what we did before. Uh, now I can do just uh, a condition or representative ID, just like this. If I refresh it, there is nothing in the table because nothing is selected. But if I select some people, we get some filtering based on that. I can also add a condition here so that if nothing is selected, the filter is not applied, which is, I guess, what would you, what you would expect. So only after we start selecting people, we get some values here. Uh, one more thing that I'd like to add here is maybe a label. Uh, but actually, if you read the, the docs or just do some experimentation, you'll find that normal people picker does not have a label argument. However, there is a component called label and you can use it to add label to pretty much anything you want. So you can just say this and it will add a very small label, label to, to this component to the one that you see on other inputs. Uh, just one thing here, you can see that the spacing is kind of wrong and this is due to the a child gap that we have applied by card, but we can make a very simple fix by wrapping these two components in a div so that they become single ch child, which kind of makes sense because label and the speaker are part of one thing. And now you can see that the spacing is fixed. And the last thing that I want to quickly show is how to use other libraries uh, in this whole dashboard. So I would like to use Plotly to display a simple bar plot. Let's add this library. And I want to use this placeholder that I added here. Uh, basically, let's just add a title and a Plotly output. Let's see what happens. So we can see that it took some space. Uh, we have this output here now. And we can now render something in that. And do note that it's now placed in React, like there's some stack component here, and it still is going to work, which was the whole point of Shiny React, to make it possible to mix various libraries. So we can just use render plotly and just some code to do the rendering. And again, I'm just like speed things up a little bit. So this is not shiny fluent related. This is related to just plotting. Let's refresh it. And I don't see anything appearing. Yeah, 
I'm not sure why exactly in this case. I think you need render plotting. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. I just uh, cheated a bit and copied the code. Uh, being slightly in a rush, I thought it will be faster to present. So yeah, you can see that the plot works uh, inside the, um, the stack, which is a React component. So you can mix and match. You can use Leaflet or any other library that you'd like for data visualization. And this is basically it. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, so this is it for the leaf coding session. We ended up with this app, which allows you some filtering, shows you a table with data, includes some different library, also shows some styling capabilities like layout and the cards. And you can keep expanding on this one, but let's leave it here. And to finish off, I'd just like uh, to say that uh, if you liked what you saw, uh, I want to say that your help is really appreciated. And how can you help? First of all, you can start using Shiny React and Shiny Fluent. And if you do, please start them on GitHub. It's really helpful for us. And then if you encounter any problems, uh, feel free to ask for help on discussions. It also helps us because we learn what are the problems. The packages are still in like very early form. We just released them and we are still discovering issues. So when you ask for help, uh, we learn what are the drawbacks, what is missing, and we also learn about bugs. And lastly, of course, you can report issues. Uh, it's probably a good idea to first discuss it using the discussions on GitHub, uh, if it's actually a bug or to get some other help. And if you are really into it, you can even send us PRs. It would be also appreciated. So once again, thank you so much. Um, and this is everything that I wanted to present. Thank you. So much. That was great. Um, there are a few questions in the chat, so feel free to add any other questions there, or we can ask them live too. Um, and I can see one of the first questions I'm scrolling back was from Sharon um, around the column Tibble uh, versus column names. Sharon. Um, I think that was from earlier in the presentation. Would you want to expand on that question? Yeah, no, I just said that you that you had shown the the col that that col columns tibble to 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 pick the ones you wanted, and you you set those two column names. And I was just curious if there's documentation showing that you you how how to create a tibble like that, or like how to how do we know to do that? So my answer is that the best way is to look at the examples. And in that case, example uses list with nested lists. And I think this is the best approach uh, unless you want some experimentation uh, because there are still some limitations for how the various data types used in R are translated to JavaScript and sent over. I did experience some problems with using tables like that. Mm. And we have some, we have an issue, for example, on Shiny Fluent related to that. So I was just like showing it to sh just like to showcase that um, actually the integration is often quite seamless. You can forget uh, to use a list of lists and accidentally pass a data frame. And oftentimes it will work in a natural way. Uh, but in this case, I would say just take a look at the example and follow the example. And I think that's the the bulletproof approach. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, and there's another question from Andrew around the render details list. Andrew, do you want to read your question? Uh, yes, thank you. So um, I noticed on for like the details list, the table, um, you used render UI versus like typically in Shiny, it, it would be like, for example, render DT. Um, so I'm curious, like, is that just for the details list or like the other components like that where you have to use the render UI versus like render component name? Yeah, so this is a very interesting topic. Uh, so the first piece of information is that you can render dynamically any piece of React UI that you like. And oftentimes it's maybe not the best approach but it's pretty simple one. So in this kind of situation, you can just 
go with it and it should work. However, uh, there are components uh, which so another option actually is to use something called uh, render react and react output and this does a similar thing but it kind of replaces the configuration of the react components instead of re-rendering everything and this is important in some situations uh, for example if you have a model from fluent ui which is used in quite a different way from the model in base shiny uh, you can actually re-render it and change one of its attributes called is open to get a nice animation of closing and opening the model and i would say this is actually the preferred method of re-rendering stuff there are no other render functions uh, coming with shiny fluent you only get this react output and render react and this is what you would like to use in general if you want to dynamically change some component. In addition to that, so, and this is a topic that you can read in the reference that I showed you earlier. Uh, there is a vignette which I showed you talking about inputs, and there is also a section on React output and render React. And otherwise, there are no functions like render DT or such in the package. Other thing that can be used is update functions and update functions are available for the inputs for the inputs with the shiny input extensions for the wrappers which we defined and they can be used to also pass basically any uh, components that uh, to, to pass any arguments that you'd like so you can change basically anything and it is entirely technically possible to extend this to other uh, components in the future. It's just that uh, we had to limit the scope of the project somehow. So for now, we do not support that. But I can see it also as an alternative to actually using render functions so that you can kind of statically place a table in your UI and then use an update function to change the items, for example. And this is something that might work in the future if we have time to implement it. Uh, but yeah, like coming back to the beginning of your question uh, feel free to just use render ui when you need dynamic rendering do read about render react uh, if if you're interested and go to the get into the tiny details uh, and otherwise you have also the update functions and these are the possibilities that you have i think they are all pretty much fine thank you thank you camille I see Hussein, if you're still on, uh, you had a question around editing the table through the web page. Oh, yeah, a simple question. Is it possible to edit the table using the web page if I, let's say, I am the user of the page that is created? So you mean a functionality similar to, say, Excel? Yeah, Excel or I think DT supports that as well. I see. So I my answer is uh, should take a look at the docs uh, because our library is pretty much the wrapper for Fluent UI and I'm not expert on the Fluent UI itself. I don't know the full capabilities of the components available there. However, my guess is that uh, the details list that I presented does not provide you built-in capabilities for editing. Uh, you could build it definitely. Uh, and there are various approaches that I can see right away. Uh, you can probably build an editable um, details list using just R. Uh, probably a better approach would be to then dive into JavaScript and use Shiny React to, to do that. Uh, so there are many options, probably nothing direct, but you need to take a look at the docs. I really cannot answer this like 100% to be 100% sure right from my head. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Thank you. And Sergio had a question um, on how this compares to Bootstrap. Uh, Sergio, do you want to expand on that? Well, I think there's nothing to expand, just to understand the main differences and well, basically how Bootstrap helps help us to 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 gain this reactivity on the on the on the apps and how this compares to, to what we're doing here. 
Right. So I would say that uh, like the biggest difference is the look that you get. Uh, use Shiny Fluent if you're interested in getting that Microsoft-like look or like you could also say enterprise-like look. Uh, this is the biggest difference I would say. It's just like different styling libraries. They have a very specific look and feel to them. I would say that Bootstrap due to its huge popularity uh, is like somewhat overused over the internet. So you get this kind of, um, uh, maybe you might get too used to it. However, th there's theming of course. So, uh, so yeah, you can give it quite a different look, but still uh, the biggest difference is basically the look and feel. However, secondly, uh, I would also say that there's like a quite a big difference in the inner workings of Fluent UI and Bootstrap. So Bootstrap is mostly a CSS, but also a JavaScript library, which applies styling largely to plain HTML components. And with Fluent UI, you are actually getting the components themselves and they are black boxes to you. you to get a checkbox uh, or a toggle uh, or a people picker, the components that we used to build the um, example app during this coding session, you actually need to use the components. There's no way to kind of grab the classes or apply some function to make some HTML input into those components. Uh, in a sense, the philosophy behind libraries based on React is kind of different. The components provided by such a library are black boxes and you kind of use them and configure them using the arguments uh, that you can see in the documentation. And Bootstrap has quite a different approach. Uh, so I would say this is a big difference when it comes like to technical terms. Um, yeah, and I think this is like how I would comment on that. Thank you. One question that I had, which maybe isn't exactly relevant to the specific talk, but if we're someone who's watching this that is like just getting started with Shiny, do you have any specific tips or tricks or things that were helpful for you? Just getting started with Shiny or, uh, so with Shiny and R in general, right? And you would like to use Shiny Fluent. Or just getting started in general, if someone was more of a beginner, do you have any tips or, or things that you would recommend? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I must say that uh, in Absalom, I mostly work like, I, I enjoy connecting various technologies. So I was kind of learning Shiny and R on the go, mm -hmm. along with other technologies that I kind of had to use. Uh, I would say, make minimal examples, but this is a very, um, a very generic advice. So I did, uh, like on many cases, I found some, when I was learning Shiny, I, I encountered like problems. I had problems understanding some reactivity things and how some things like observers, events, and so on work. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes I also found it difficult to implement some features, like I wanted some specific delay or uh, or some some other reactivity related thing to work, and I had some troubles with that. And yeah, basically what helped me was like making really minimal examples. I think with Shiny, what's really tempting is that you can get some basic stuff working really quick. Uh, but as your app grows, uh, you start getting problems. And if you have a big app, it's kind of difficult to debug it and to find those problems. And by like trying to strip down everything to the essentials, to, to the thing that is not working and that you do not quite understand, you can really learn a lot. And also read the reference regularly. And yeah, the, <laughs> I, I don't have a really good set of tips, but this is what I would say. Thank you. I know we're getting right to the top of the hour here. So if anybody has to drop, I did also want to um, put a quick shout out there because I think Jordan put in the chat about Absalon presenting at Uzar as well. So Jordan, did you want to just announce that briefly before anyone has to drop? Uh, yeah, the best way to learn more about uh, Absalon presentations at Uzar is to click that link, which I will here again. Uh, 
actually just visit our blog and uh, yeah, check out our blog post about user presentations. Okay, thank you so much, Jordan. Um, there are two more questions, if that's okay, Camille. I, I don't know if you have to run right at the top. No, no, I can answer it definitely. Thank you. Anton, do you wanna ask your question live? Um, yeah, sure, but I was talking, I was asking about low code and no code solutions, but I think Rachel, you already asked this when you said about beginners, you know, mm -hmm. um, what would be the advantage? And I think Camille gave a reasonable answer. So I'd rather listen to other questions, answers to other questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Amit Rajit, uh, I think you have you have a question on, you noticed that Camille is using VS Code and just curious to know like benefits of VS Code versus RStudio. Probably a weird question for me from RStudio, so I'll let you ask Amit. Yeah, I, I, uh, great presentation, Kamil. Thanks for that. I just wanted to know, like, I've never used uh, VS Code, so I uh, just wanted to know if there are any specific benefits. That's all. Yeah, perfectly reasonable question. I I had thought several times that it might be slightly weird for me to use Inkeep instead of RStudio on this kind of presentations. Uh, the main reason why I do that is that, as I said, I work across various technologies. I quite often do Python, I do quite a lot of JavaScript, oftentimes uh, also like Docker and the Bash and so on. So I really need something that um, works well regardless of the language. And VS Code is one of the, like currently I think it is the most popular IDE, um, like at, at least I recently checked and it was. And it's probably because it's just a very simple text editor in its core with plugins, but obviously I don't use plugins too much. I just like like the simplicity of it being an editor. And yeah, it like works real well for me when I need to switch often between different types, languages, technologies, and so on. And I, I used RStudio for some time as well, when like at the beginning, uh, when I was working in Absalon and doing more, um, more Shiny. Uh, I also enjoyed like, there are some features which are lacking in um, VS Code, in my opinion, compared to our studio. Like it's really cool to see the data that you can that uh, that you are exploring, and also have a preview of UI components and so on. Uh, but after some time, I didn't need this kind of features that much, and rather I needed a fast editor for anything, and that's how I ended up using VS Code basically. Thanks, thanks, Tim. Um, one other question I have is, so I know we titled this talk, like building beautiful shiny apps and was curious, like when you're communicating these shiny apps out with other people, do you find that you get more engagement from viewers depending on like how the shiny app looks? Oh, definitely. This is like super important, I think, because like, um, me personally, when I see an app with, with like uh, lots of uh, focus on the UI, it's just like more uh, tempting and I'm more eager to use it from the beginning. And then I can like um, see what's been up, what are the features and so on. And we had like this kind of remarks from uh, many people who started using Fluent UI, for example, or other libraries like Shiny Semantic uh, from Absalon as well. Uh, basically, I think some focus on the looks of the app is really important because it's the first thing that you see, only later you start playing with the functionalities. And based on what I heard from people, it's quite important and based what I think it, it is very important. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Camille, for a great presentation. We really appreciate it. And I do also just want to put one more plug out there for, I know Absalon um, asked about any feedback you have on the presentation and they put a link in the chat window right there as well, which would be super helpful. Um, but thank you so much, Camille, and, and thank you to the whole Absalon team for working together with, with me on this meetup. Uh, thank you all so much for joining. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you for attending. It was a pleasure to present. Have a good day. Thank you, it was oh, great.
quick questions about the recording. I will share the recording to the meetup page. Um, so I'll just put it under there in the discussions and then I'll, I'll put it on LinkedIn as well. But if anybody ever can't find anything or has any extra questions, feel free to reach out to me directly too, whether on Meetup, LinkedIn, or Rachel at rstudio.com. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.